Hello all, welcome back to electronicsinnovation.com. It's been a while since we met you. But I'm excited to be back with another fascinating project. I am Iron Man. So the idea is to replicate this Iron Man arc reactor from Iron Man 2 movie, which uses a new element unofficially called as potassium. So let's see how we can achieve this. There are several ways to approach it. One simple way is to just white and blue LEDs and illuminate them. You will get a basic version. But I wanted to add more features to it. So I choose the WS2812C slash W. It's an addressable LED with an operating current of 5 milliamps, making it ideal for portable electronic devices. The pin configuration as follows. There are four pins, VDD, DIN, Dout and VSS. The power supply voltage ranges from plus 3.5 volts to plus 5.3 volts. So I can power directly through any power bank. It has a cruising current of 0.3 milliamps and RGB channel constant current is 5 milliamps as mentioned at the start of the document. The data transfer time as follows and the data transmission method are as follows. The data of D1 is sent by the MCU and D2, D3 and D4 are transmitted through the pixels internal reshaping amplification. Now let's move to the application circuit. VDD should be connected to the 5 volts and VSS should be connected to ground. The first LEDs D in should be connected to the MCU and the D out of the first LED should be connected to the D in of the second LED. This pattern should continue until the last LED. Additionally, we need to place a capacitor across VDD and VSS of the LED for filtering purposes. The recommended capacitor value is 100 nanofarads, but I'll use 1 microfarad for better filtering purposes. I have designed the same circuit in RDM Designer. Here is the first LED. VDD is connected to 5 volts and VSS is connected to ground. I have also placed the filter capacitor. The D in is connected to the MCU pin using the port symbol in LTM Designer. For this project, I am using NodeMCU ESP8266 as a microcontroller because of its Wi-Fi capabilities and low cost. The D out of the first LED is connected to the D in of the next LED as shown here and this pattern continues until the last LED. But why do I need so many LEDs? According to this drawing, the diameter of the arc reactor is 77 millimeters. Sir, you want to run some tests? Run them. In this scene from Iron Man 2, the arc reactor with palladium and new element shares the same outer casing. Ah! It's just a coconut. Metal. Oh, wow. yeah. So I'm using same dimensions for the arc reactor with the new element. I also wanted to keep out 2.5 mm and overall 5 mm for the wall and bezel of the casing, leaving us with 72 mm. This 72 mm will be our PCB's diameter. I have distributed the LEDs in a uniform distance pattern resulting in this layout. The outer ring will have a 16 LEDs. The next ring will have a 12 LEDs. The following ring will have 8 LEDs. Finally, one LED will be in the middle. So total number of LEDs required is 37. That's how I determined the number of LEDs. Once all connections were completed, I exported the components to the PCB file for component placement and routing. I have placed all 37 LEDs in previously discussed fashion. And filter capacitor has also been placed near the VDD terminal. The NodeMCU module was added to the bottom layer. I modified the footprint of the NodeMCU because I wanted to solder this NodeMCU as a SMT component, although it's a through hole component. We have LEDs on the back side and I don't want these through hole pads to interfere with the LEDs. The plan is to desolder the node MCU pins and solder the module directly to the bottom layer in a SMT fashion. 
I then completed routing part and added ground copper pores on both top and bottom layers. After that, I stitched both ground planes with wires. After completing the layout and routing, our arc reactor PCB will look something like this. In 3D, it looked like this. Here is the top layer and this is how it looks on the bottom layer. Before I proceed to generate GABA files, I would like to have the design reviewed by another designer to eliminate any errors that I have missed it. You might think that I would share these files with another designer for a review, but no, I am not going to do that. Instead, I am going to use one of Altium's greatest and most useful cloud-based platforms for electronics development, the Altium 365. Altium 365 is a cloud-based application suite that connects everyone involved in electronic product development. This is where Altium 365 comes in handy. I will simply activate the Altium 365 workspace, add the project to workspace and click on the share button at the top right corner, specify the email address and share it. So there is no file transfer, it is only through the Altium 365 workspace. I might make a separate video on RTM 365 overview and capabilities sometimes later. For now, let's stick to Arc Reactor project. Now, you would have received an email to log into RTM 365 and review this. Let's wait for him to review and share comments. One eternity later. So, we have received some components from him. He has pointed out two issues. The first one is that C36 and C37 are interfering with each other. And the second one is to add logo. I am not sure about the first one, I will have to check it out. And yes, how did you forget the logo? This is why you need another person to review your design. Altium 365 makes this process very easy and streamlines collaborative design. It promotes parallel work. With the RTM 365 in place, there will be no duplicate files. It also helps us with version control. With all these features, I personally feel that RTM 365 will become the GitHub for hardware designs. Okay, let's fix these two issues. Yes, the sill screen of C36 and C37 are interfering. Let me fix this. Let's go back to Altium Designer and look here. We can see those two comments here in Altium Designer 2. It's all synced to the same thing. Fix it. Let's open the second comment and the second one is to add logo. Okay, let me hide the top layer and top overlay and select the bottom overlay. Now select the place option from the menu and choose graphics. Specify the area for the logo placement, select the logo, choose appropriate settings and click on OK to place the logo. Change the orientation. That's it. We have the logo in place. In 3D, it looks something like this. Now, unhide all layers. Save the project to the server and approve it. Once all are synced with the server, you will see this tick mark. Now let's go back to RTM 365 and refresh to see the updated changes. Yeah, both fixes are successfully reflected on the RTM 365 too. Now we can actually share these release files with the manufacturer on this platform. Let me show you how. Let's take the sample project came underscore fmu and go to the release folder.
here you can see the release files now you can choose the send to manufacturer option to share these files with the manufacturer via email generally when you are working in an organization you can set up the manufacturer process with rtm 365 or convince the manufacturer to onboard rtm 365 alternatively you might already be tied up with different manufacturer and get these pcbs or pcba from them by sharing these files as you already have the process set up for cost and logistics. But in my case, as an individual YouTuber with the limited project requirements, it is difficult to convince manufacturers to use RTM 365 and take orders to this platform. So I need to generate GABA files and manually visit the particular manufacturer's online order platform to complete the order. So this is the one of the lack of feature I would see from the RTM 365. Maybe in the future, it would be great if RTM 365 could provide an option to order PCBs through the manufacturer's online website. There should be an option to select the particular manufacturer. And when we click on order, the GABA file should automatically be uploaded and redirect us to the PCB order page of the chosen manufacturer. Hello RTM team, if you are watching this, please bring this feature soon. It is very, 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 very helpful for us. Okay, now let's go to RTM designer and generate the fab files. So these are our fab files. You can see the GABA files, we can place files and all the files required for PCB fabrication. Let's compress these files into a zip file. Now that the fab files are ready, we can visit any PCB manufacturer's online order platform and place our order. Now let's visit our PCB manufacturer nextpcb.com. Nextpcb.com is a reliable multi-layer PCB manufacturer that takes order online and delivers PCBs to your doorstep across the globe. Currently, there are some very exciting offers with nextpcb.com. You can get your first PCB order free up to 20 USD. And they are also offering free PCB assembly for 5 PCBs and 50% off on up to 100 PCB assemblies. What are you waiting for? Grab this offer now for your next PCB order. As usual, you can order PCBs through the PCB port tab. Upload the GABA files and it will analyze the files and show us how the PCB looks. Fill in the details and you can proceed with the order if you are not making any changes. But before that, try to do a sanity check. Verify the layer code size of the PCB, quantity, PCB thickness, solder mask color and still screen. Here I am going with basic settings, green solder mask and white still screen. For the rest of the settings, let's keep them default. Choose the option if data conflicts, ask for confirmation. This way we can avoid any mistakes at this stage. After verification, just click on add to cart. The PCB is now added to the cart. Let's order the components with the next PCB's BOM service. Upload the BOM file, verify the quantity and submit the order. Let's go back to the cart. Click on checkout. Enter the delivery address, choose the shipment provider, select the suitable payment option and complete the payment process. Alright, that wrap up our PCB designing process with Altium Designer and Altium 365 as well as the PCB ordering process with next PCB. In the next video, we'll unbox these PCBs, assemble the components, program the node MCU and put everything to the test. So stay tuned for more exciting updates. Bye-bye.